Up to seven years ago, Georgi Markov was one of the best-known playwrights and authors in Bulgaria, if not in the whole of Eastern Europe. Today, uh, Georgi has come over to Western Europe, and he works now for the Bulgarian service of the BBC. Georgi, is there any kind of music that you don't like to listen to? Military marches and party songs. Anything that's pompous, that kind of thing? Yeah. Right, so what are we going to hear first of all? I'm starting with something I really love very much. Uh, uh, it reminds me of my childhood. When I was a child, I was singing. God knows I was singing in a church choir. And the song is uh, very, very popular in Bulgaria. And it's an old 14th century church song called Dostoino Est. <laughs> Ivan Kukazal Choir. Beautiful, beautiful sound there, Georgi. But you were telling me while we were listening to it that, in fact, you've got one rather painful memory of that one, haven't you? I just said that uh, during singing in the choir, the conductor slapped me because I opened the window and all notes went to the floor, so we stopped. <laughs> and it was a bit embarrassing in church, particularly. What was the language that was being used there? Old Bulgarian. You see, the old Slavs Orthodox Church sings in Old Bulgarian. That's a real Old Bulgarian. Who are the Bulgarians? Where do they come from? That's a very difficult question. I mean, if I ask you the same about Britain or English, or where they come from... Well, I'll tell you, all the best ones come from Ireland or Scotland. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Bulgarians, anyway, uh, it's uh, a long story. Uh, the first Bulgarians were this uh, tribe connected with uh, the Huns and Mongolians. Uh, there were 50,000 horsemen, wild and brave horsemen, who crossed Danube and founded in 682 the uh, first Bulgarian state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they merged with Slavs, and uh, actually the form was Bulgarian, but the substance was Slavic. So that was the thing that has kind of Bulgarians mellowed are. the yeah. wild horsemen in yeah. the past. Yes, we got to know from the horsemen the name and uh, a few words, and that's all. Let's go on to record number two. What's that going to be? Record number two will be something connected with uh, uh, my young years when I was mad with classics and uh, not necessarily only with classics but uh, with a girl who used to live opposite our house and she was um, a very bad violin player and there was another extremely bad piano player and they were playing all day the spring sonata better and I doubt whether they ever learned to play properly but she was so beautiful that I think it was the best performance of the Spring Sonata I ever heard. <laughs> part of Beethoven's Spring Sonata, played by Wolfgang Schneiderhan and Carl Seyman. I'm sorry that we couldn't get it performed by your childhood sweetheart for you, Georgi. Let's go straight on to the next one, while you console yourself. Night on the Bear Mountain is uh, my favorite composer, uh, Mussorgsky. <laughs>
brief extract from Sorsky's Night on the Bear Mountain, played by the London Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by David Lloyd Jones. And I could see while that was being played, Yorkie, that, that it does something to you. Well, it is uh, very, very near to me. Uh, I mean, I think it's Mussorgsky is perhaps an example of the real artist, of the uh, something uh, really uh, independent and free and strong and mad. I think it was this kind of great madness. It's uh, in music particularly is the most important, the, the strongest element in music. Music cannot be, uh, for me in my terms, cannot be a kind of uh, petty bourgeois uh, art of, you see, of a kind of uh, homemade beauty. This is a, a space, you see, it's a storming really, the best part of a free human spirit. Yeah. You know, he was a really uh, a great man, Mussorgsky. Something coming from the soil, stemming from the atmosphere. From this is Russia. If you want to know Russia, listen Mussorgsky. That's all. I should not say necessarily Tchaikovsky and Glazunov, but listen Mussorgsky. That is really unforged proper Russia for me in my terms. And of course, you've been there. I was there, and I think that. Uh, uh, if you know proper Russia, real Russia, I don't mean Soviet Union, I mean Russia, uh, you will really love it. It's, uh, I mean, when you, when you speak about Russia, I always think about Mussorgsky, I think about Dostoevsky, I think about Tolstoy, Turgenev, Chekhov, that's Russia. Yes. Did you find in your own writing, do you find in your own writing the same wildness, the same straining against barriers, the same feeling of wanting to be liberated, wanting to be free? Well, I feel in myself um, uh, something quite obscure, actually, a necessity to rebel yeah. against any kind of uh, uh, authorities. If you want really to uh, make me hate something, tell me that authorities want or uh, like or impulse that musical, that thing, and I never, never would accept that immediately. That's a question of character, I believe. Maybe a question of personal sickness. <laughs> Was it because of this uh, instinctive rebellion against authority that eventually you had to leave Bulgaria? I mean, was there something within you that was saying, here is an authority, I've got to keep hitting against it? I think partly this is the reason because I try to compromise as much as I can and it was eventually too much. And the whole atmosphere was in deep disagreement with myself. I don't want to say that I am, let's say, braver or more honest than other people. Perhaps if I were more honest I should have been there because if you're honest you should stay there and fight the battle there, not being here. Mm. I think, in a way, it was kind of free irresponsibility. When you say in England, I'm fed up, and you just go away. That's more. We must uh, hear some more music, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, let's uh, change the tune to something extremely nice. And uh, even in Bulgaria in the 50s, 60s, uh, just because uh, it was official, uh, ban on jazz. We are all young people at that time. Uh, we love listening to jazz. I think that we were mad. And uh, one of uh, uh, the best thing of this time I remember is Charlie Parker. So let's listen to something with a significant title, Chasing the Bird. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 